So uh, a lot of folks thought there were two different Bernie Hayes's, <laughs> but uh, actually it was just, just me. Johnny Rabbit, Ron Ells, he asked me if I would come to St. Louis. And I couldn't figure out whether it was 20 years ahead of me or 20 years behind me be because of some of the things people would say and do. And after a while, a while I was that far ahead. Things that were happening to me had been happening to me 20 years earlier. Leo's Blue Note Club. And I'd go in there and uh, it was live music all the time. Don James and Leo was five. We'd sit around, we'd talk for a while. Uh, I says, why don't I do some interviews in between the music? You know, and I says, maybe four minutes a day, maybe five minutes, and I'll call someone up that, that the people who are listening to us would be interested in. And so I, he said, fine. But they trusted us and they knew us. So we, we, we were among them, we were of the community. And so that, that was very important as black radio. It even means the entertainers, you know, Red Fox, Lou Rawls, Yusuf Latif. All the popular musicians and entertainers that come with Puna. See, at the, uh, the afternoon, being a soul jock, it was real high energy. You know, you know we'd rhyme and so forth and have just lots of fun. But I was not considered a recording artist. I was not a singer. So if you listen to those songs you, you hear, it's, it's a, a more or less a rapping movie long before rapping became popular. Uh, the nighttime was a jazz show and it was more relaxed and laid back. Tribute to a black woman is really a, a tribute to black women. It's a tribute to all women, actually. And, uh, I love that. If they heard Red Fox at the club or some other notable personality, they would come to Blue Note. Race didn't matter. Religion didn't matter. They just uh, enjoyed each other and that show. And I somehow I felt that love. I hear the National Black Radio Hall of Fame and people are just becoming aware of it. And it, seeing when they visit our space at Harris Stowe, they see what we have done. Alan Eisenberg at KKSS when I was there, I was actually the boss at the station. And uh, Scott St. James, a white disc jockey, was subservient to me, you know, in position was making more than I was making. <laughs> and so I told Alan Iceberg, I said, Alan, uh, Scott works for me, and yet still he makes more money than me. And Alan told me to my face, oh, Bernie, he's white. And white people make more money than white people. They're supposed to make more money than white people. I said, okay, thank you, Alan. So I a suit the station through EEOC and won a suit. At one time, after I started Black Talk Radio, there were eight Black Talk stations. There are none now, except for two on the weekends, and uh, they're on limited one hour piece, I believe. And how we preserved that information and history. And they're seeing uh, what a viable tool it can be to educate their future generations. But uh, radio is always a good way because it's portable. You may take radio with you, like St. Louis Public Radio is one of the best mediums that you can find. But ordinarily, it's just day to day living. You listen to people talk, find out what the issues are either political or civic, you know. We've contributed so much that people do not know about. And when they become aware of that, they want to help us. And that's what we need now. We need to, to spread the word. We need to open people's eyes to what, what really happened, to remind them of what certain things that we did. And usually we uh, gather a friend.